Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you that how you can store custom types into app storage. If you don't really know about app storage, then there is a link in the description. You can check it out and that will take you to my original video of app description for iOS 14. So how can we store custom types, meaning structures and classes into app storage, which in other words is going to store it in user defaults? Well, the first thing we need is a custom type. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a structure and I will go ahead and call this settings. The important part over here is that you have to make sure that this is conforming to the codable protocol, which is going to allow it to be coded and decoded from JSON. So encoding and decoding between JSON, serializing. So make sure that it is conforming to the codable protocol. After that, we can go ahead and create some properties. So I'm gonna say dark mode, and these properties are just dummy properties. Uh, you can add any property that you want, and a name, which is string. Okay, so this is great. Now, how can we encode this? How can we create an instance of settings, which consists of the dark mode and the name, and we can put it into app storage, which in other words is going to put into user defaults. Well, the first thing we need is a property for app storage. So I'm just gonna say app storage, property wrapper. And the key that I'm going to be providing is, we'll call it settings, private var, and then I'm gonna simply call it settings data. And that's the important part because the you're storing the actual data type into the app storage. So in other words, the setting will eventually be serialized into data and the data will be stored in the app storage, which is user defaults. So how do we store it? Well, the first thing we need is obviously some sort of a button and I'm just gonna call it over here save in user defaults, uh, save in app storage, I guess we can say. Here we go, save in app storage. Okay, what are we trying to save? Well, we're trying to save settings or any other custom type that you have. So let's go ahead and create settings. And then we will get the settings data. So I'll simply say guard let settings data equals to json encoder dot encode and we are going to go ahead and encode settings and the reason that it is encoded uh, or can be encoded is because we are using the codable protocol which is right over here so because of the codable protocol we are able to encode and decode this once we have the settings data which is simply data type, we can go ahead and assign it to settings data, which is the app storage property wrapper, and we can assign it. So this type right over here is the one that we have declared right here. Once we assign the settings data, which is this one on line 26 to settings data, which is on over here, it's immediately going to store it in user defaults. Pretty cool, right? Now, how do we get it back? Well, we will get it back in a very similar fashion. The first thing we need is obviously we need to get a button working. So let's go ahead and add a button. Load from app storage. And now we need to use JSON decoder. So JSON decoder dot decode and the type that we are decoding in this case is settings so settings dot self and the data that we are decoding is simply settings data so I'm just going to pass in settings data this can actually fail so let's go ahead and call this settings equals to try optional so that if it does fail it is going to give us null or else we'll return it. Okay, so what should we do with the settings? So hopefully this will return us the actual settings object. And if you want to display the settings, well, the first thing you need 
is some sort of a property, the state property. So I'm creating a string property called output. Whenever I will assign the output or whenever I assign output any property or any value, since this is a state property, it is going to render the body again. So let's go ahead and assign something. Basically, we're simply assigning the values from the settings. Nothing more. There we go. So output is a string, which is is dark mode, is settings dot dark mode, and name is settings dot name. So we will get the original object back, the original object that we set up right over here, where the dark mode is true and name is John Doe. And finally, we can go ahead and display this. So we can, just, since it's a string, we can simply use the text property and we can simply display it. Now let's go ahead and run this. And the first thing we will need to do is we need to save it in the app storage. So I'm going to click the save in app storage button. And now I will say load from app storage. And now you can see dark mode is true, name is John Doe. Let's go ahead and change something. So I'm going to go ahead and say dark mode is false and name is Mary Doe. So I'm just going to change the name. Let's run it again. So save in app storage, load from app storage. And now you can see the different name get populated. So in other words, we can easily create our custom structure, our custom class, conform it to the codable protocol, and then save it into the user defaults, and it all works great. And using app storage becomes very, very simple because you simply assign the values, and it simply goes and stores itself in the user defaults. Pretty cool. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have a brand new course, which is SwiftUI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. This is the most comprehensive course available on Udemy. You can actually see that this is around 17.5 hours, the longest course and the most comprehensive complete course on SwiftUI anywhere. You can see that we start with creating and combining views building lists and navigation. Then we even dive into the MVVM design pattern, learning how to use MVVM design pattern to create our next SwiftUI applications. I'm also covering the core data integration and also Swift recipes, which includes building a rating view, downloading images. And now I'm also covering all the Swift 2.0 changes. You can see there are a lot of changes coming up. We're already over an hour of changes and I keep on adding new things. The best way to get this course is check out the description of YouTube. And in the YouTube description, you will not only find a link to the Swift UI course, but you will also find many different links for all of my courses. And I would really appreciate if you want to show the support, then check out my other courses. I just released another course on Vapor 4, which allows you to write Swift application or APIs using uh, Swift on the server and on the cloud, which is an amazing course. So definitely check that out. I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for your continuous support.